So let's go ahead and play with the other color channels. I'm going to move this, click and move, drag, click and drag my way to a happier life. I'm going to move this down here. I'm going to select our, our viewer node so we can see our whiter background, a little yellower uh, freebie after all our plastic surgery. Let's click on the color ramp node and duplicate this node twice by pressing Shift D, moving your mouse, clicking, Shift D, moving our mouse, clicking to drop the color ramp node. Let's go ahead and cut these red and green channels and thread the red to the top color ramp and the green to the middle color ramp. And the outputs of these color ramps, don't get them mixed up or you'll end up with some really bizarre colors. Thread the top to the red and the middle to the green. So now we've reconstructed our channels. Notice that too, when we duplicated the node, we duplicated these settings as well. So we're cutting off the lower end of these spectrums. So if you cut off the lower ends of all of these spectrums and we condense the normal color spectrum down to 0 to 1, so a little bit of blue becomes no blue, halfway becomes a little less, what we're doing is really just increasing the contrast. You can kind of see that in the picture. Her black, her brown hair has become black now. Her white teeth become whiter. So an easy way to increase the contrast of any channel is simply to bring up from the bottom. So now we're into playing with the color channels. What can you do when you play with color channels? Well, you can make her like uh, you can make her a little healthier looking. Give her like some auburn highlights in her hair. You can increase the contrast and really make the whites stand out. If you use Photoshop or GIMP, you're going you're probably yawning by now and if you haven't drew probably you're amazed that you can do all of this for free. The other big thing and the big advantage over GIMP and Photoshop and like that is that this is a render layer. If this was an animation, as the camera flies down the street scene and puts out the render of every frame, you can now do color correction after rendering or on the fly. Color correction on the fly as you are rendering out your scene. The other thing you can do is you can also, using the image input node, instead of the render layer node, apply consistent color correction to an image, a group of image, or series of images simply by adding the image input node. And let's go ahead and do that. Space add input image. Load up a new image or just use one of the ones that we already have. Let's go ahead and use the node because that is such a funny looking one. And I know she's going to love me so much for using this one. Let's go ahead and cut the thread there and thread in the big nose image. And now these exact same settings are being applied to this image. If this was a movie and we wanted to, in post-production, we shot some live action video and we now want to make these kinds of changes to it, we can easily do so and simply by pressing animate, we will render from the start and end frames, read in the movie, and away we go. Before I move on from the color ramp nodes and what they can do, I want to talk a little bit about two things. One is the way in which they translate, the scale in which they use to translate, because that segues over into the color curves, as well as the alpha channel that you can control using the color ramp node. Playing with the alpha channel is a key to compositing in combining images and layering them on top of one another. The scale or the, the algorithm that is used to translate the input to the output, this gradient in the middle, is controlled here through these four buttons. And L is selected always by default, and L stands for linear. And that means that on a linear method from 0 to 1, this scale is going to scale up in a very even manner. If we chose exponential, or E, then what happens is that on an exponential basis, the values scale from one to the other. And the other, uh, there's cardinal, as well as a B-spline. So these interpolations, these, uh, these four buttons, control the manner in which the interpolation is made. If you want, for example, a very fine gradient, and you are, an example, is modeling an eyeball, you want uh, a gradient between transparency and opaqueness to go in the uh, cornea region, you really want to use an exponential drop-off so that it drops off very quickly, but still very smoothly, 
but much better than linear. Uh, it if reflects a uh, sort of like an, a, an accumulation, faster ramp up, faster build up, more of a curve as opposed to a straight line. Another effect that you're getting is, uh, I believe it's called posterization, where as you condense these colors down to a very narrow range, you're only passing through the middle values, you're cutting off the bottoms, you're cutting off the highs, you're and you're condensing everything down to a very narrow range and you can get some brilliant just uh, artifacts in your output as you can see down here. 